thank you, Pastor Mike and Jill, for the absolute awesome privilege of being back with you in this house. We don't know everything is about worship. We just love to worship God and want to encourage you on the journey. In fact, the motto of our ministry, Arrowhead Ministries, is to encourage the worship culture in the local church. Whatever that looks like today, be encouraged. Yesterday we had a great time with Lish and the team. You have a marvelous worship team in this church. Yeah. And we're just here to encourage them. Say, come on, guys. Keep moving forward. Keep growing in God. Keep serving the Lord. And keep lifting up His name. So I bring a greeting from my wife, Desma. I showed you pictures before, but here's an up-to-date one. Here she is. We've been married 32 years this month. In fact, next week while I'm away, we celebrate our anniversary. But I will be back with her in a couple of weeks after that. Uh, and our family, our five children and five grandchildren, they all say hi, and two dogs, if you can find them there, and a rabbit. Uh, it's just, I love family, and I'm showing pictures of family today because God, I want to uphold the family values that God's given in, in His Word. Yeah. Healthy families are, are a great course to society, and whatever you do, get, you know, protect your family and the family values. And, and here's our children, and then two of them are married now with their spouse, oh, and dog, of course, can, can, have a dog in the picture. But my daughter Melody in the front with the blonde hair, she is our eldest daughter, she is 30, and her husband Dave, they're married, they have four of the grandkids, and they live right near where we live. So we end up minding them heaps, and uh, if, uh, if they have any more, my wife and I said, we're gonna go and live in Tasmania. That's an island off Australia, you know? But no, we, we want them to have more. Uh, so they serve with Pastor Mark and Darlene in the local church, and they are service pastors there as well as in business and uh, leading businessmen in the presence of God as well. Uh, behind Melody is our second eldest daughter, Bree. She is uh, at Hillsong uh, Church, and she's actually on full-time staff there as a college lecturer. And as well as that, she's finished her double degree in singing and in, in teaching. Beside her is Ashley and Stephen. They're our adopted children. We adopted them when they were 11 and 9. Let me tell you, I've got a, I feel like I have a greater revelation of the adoption heart of God since adopting children myself. You see, you've been adopted into the family, the house of God, yeah. and you belong. Yeah. You sit at the same table with Jesus. When Ashley and Stephen joined our family, their mother had passed away, they were homeless, and they joined our family from our, from our local church. And uh, they didn't kind of, we didn't say, now listen guys, you can't eat with us. Uh, they just sat down at the same table as our natural children and said, what's for dinner, mum? You are a joint heir with Jesus. You sit at the same table beside Jesus. You have the same rights and privileges as Jesus. We didn't say to Ashley and Stephen, now you guys, you know, we're, we're, we don't have quite enough room. We can, you can sleep in the shed out the back. No, we gave them their own bedroom and their own bed so they were comfortable. We had to get a bigger car. We couldn't afford to adopt two children, but you know what? It's amazing how children bring provision with them. And we've known the blessing and favor of God. Jesus said, when you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. We've known the favor of God for this one thing more than all the 47 albums I've produced and the 147 songs, 178 songs we have published with CCLI and APRA and AMCOS and all the nations we travel in and all the sermons we preach. Jesus said, well, you do it for the least of these. So I appreciate my wife and her heart for our, our children and for taking, enlarging her heart. In front of them is Jordan with a beard uh, and, and his wife Paula. Uh, Jordan was on staff at Hillsong Church as a uh, video TV editor, edited a lot of the United uh, videos that you've seen, the DVDs, and uh, his wife Paula came from Poland, from Norway, and uh, came to Hillsong College and they fell in love. And they told me they were just playing basketball, but I knew something else was going on, you know. We're just down playing, who are you playing basketball with, Jordan? You know, <clears throat> it was Paula. And uh, so they now have, uh, they have a son as well. And here's the five grandkids and their, their little boy. Uh, they wouldn't even stop eating for a photo. Can you believe that? Like, come on. Uh, so on the right is Levi. And on the far left is Andy. She's, uh, she's named after me, A-N-D-I. And uh, that's really, really cool. Solomon and um, Tim. And then Aria, uh, just on the second, from the right there, she uh, had her fifth birthday just yesterday. I was talking to her via FaceTime. And she's all dressed up in a pretty five-year-old dress and a ballerina cake for her. Oh, it's just so beautiful, so sweet. I love it. Getting old is amazing. I love getting older. Anybody here that's over 50, you want to stop saying, I hate getting older. Come on. 
Stop it. Just stop it in the name of the Lord. I rebuke you. I, you wouldn't believe the amount of people around the planet that are over 50 saying, getting old sucks. Like, I don't want to hear that as a young man. All these young people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that getting old is good. It's positive. Taking the kingdom of God. We're advancing. We're growing. We're getting stronger. We're becoming wiser. We need glasses occasionally to help us see things. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being alive. Ah, oh, family. So here's little uh, Levi. Um, and now Levi, he, he gets confused because his mother speaks Polish and her parents speak Polish, so he's a lot of Polish. And then Jordan speaks only Australian English. And then at church and at school, he hears all the kids speaking Norwegian. Norwegian. So in, in, three, in, in one sentence, three languages will come out. He's, he's learning to be a preacher right here. Look at this. Crank it up for me, please. We got that one word. Well, he, he'll keep going. Come on, Levi. He's learning to sing as well. You singing this song? Got no freedom, it's an open door. You are everything I want and more. Don't leave me hanging. Oh, we miss him so much. Uh, <laughs> I, I thank the Lord for his idea of family. It really is brilliant. And I just say love the ones that God's given you. Treasure them, value them, love them, appreciate them. I was just, I spent a, a good hour or so last night talking to my wife by FaceTime and our daughter Bree, they were there together. They've been on the beach sun tanning. It's turning into summer in Australia. So they've been out there getting a sun tan and enjoying the, the summer. Let's, let's look at worship this morning here. I just want to share a few thoughts. I'm not going to preach long. Everyone say, Andrew will preach short. Andrew will preach short. Prophesy that. <laughs> Psalm 34. Worship God if you want the best. Does anybody want the best for their life? Yeah. We're happy to settle for second best or just average, just getting by. No, we want the best. But let me encourage you, be a real worshiper of God. Don't hesitate to get involved in worship. Worship opens doors to all of His goodness. Come on, all the goodness of God is available to you. Public worship is a great reflection that we have a real personal relationship with God. It was known in the Hebrew culture that people would lift their hands in public to just acknowledge that, hey, I'm a follower of God. I serve the living God. And don't be afraid of that, that public outworking of worship. Worship is not a lifestyle. Worship is a life. Yeah. Let's not bring the creator of the heavens and the universe down into a little thing that we fit in occasionally. So this year, our doctor has given us some instructions to my wife and I to go and join the local gym and go and work out and build some muscle and burn some fat and do some cardio and lift some weights. And so since June of this year, we, we joined the gym. And it's, it's a lifestyle. You know, we, we get there when we can. You know, you should go at least four times a week, but sometimes we get there once or twice. And one particular week, I got there 10 times in a row, like 10 days in a row. I was so proud of myself, like, wow, what a breakthrough, you know. And uh, I feel alive. I feel great. Some of you guys should join the gym. Like, do something. Do something you don't normally do. And, and let, let God's life flow through you. And do something really active. But uh, it's, we get there when we can. But see, worship's not like that. Worship is our life. It's not just something we fit in. It's, it's everything we do that honors the Father. The purpose of worship is to help us become more aware of God. 
is we're often aware of ourselves, aware of what's going on in our lives, and aware of our family, and aware of challenges that we face. But worship somehow helps us be aware of the greatness of God. And when you're aware of that greatness, you don't have a problem singing to Him and lifting your hands and lifting your voice. That's the outworking of that. Worship in the New Testament, this is what it means. It means to honor and love as a deity, to regard with ardent and adoring esteem and devotion, to participate in the rites of worship. I want you to say that word participate. participate. Notice it doesn't say to spectate the rites of worship, to participate. Yeah? And let me encourage you never hang back, get involved. It's not about watching someone else worship, but you connecting with the living God. Corporate worship together in the New Testament involves us singing praise to God. Paul and Silas in the midst of prison, in the midst of jail, in the midst of being like, they were going to be killed, man. They started to sing praises to God. Don't base your praises and your worship to God on how you feel or your circumstances at that time. If you're locked up, you feel like you're imprisoned with circumstances, start to worship the living God. Lift your voice to Him. You can speak worship to God and you can sing worship to Him. You can turn your voice into an instrument instantly. The word worship comes from the Greek word neochorus and it literally means the temple sweeper. It means to serve. It's found in Acts 19, 35. And you know, I watch people, they come and they vacuum the carpet. Do you call it vacuum? Hoover? I don't know what you call it, you know. That thing, yeah. And, and, and people last night before the service, they were going around cleaning up bottles and picking up cups and they were serving. They were worshiping the Lord. Can I encourage you? Don't just come and sing the songs of worship. Get active in serving in your local church. That's worship. Find a place you can serve. Find another way to contribute and do something that needs to be done. That is worship to the Father. Another definition of worship in the New Testament is this, a continuous outpouring. Worship means that we're continually outpouring to something. Let's make it God. Let's make it His kingdom, His house. Our bank statement reveals our continuous outpouring. What we do with our money. And I think the very least that any of us can do is bring a tithe to the Lord and, and offerings on top of that. That's the least that we can do. That, to me, that's not, you have to do that. That's the least that I can do. Because you know what? The Word of God says, where my heart is, there is my treasure. You can't separate your heart and your money. Where your treasure is, your heart will get there as well. It's very quiet in this place here today. We worship, we listen. It's hypocrisy when we come and lift our hands to the Lord and sing, I worship you, I love you, Lord, but we don't bring our money. That's just a hypocrite. God's looking at the continuous outpouring of our life. What is it? What's it going into? Let's make His kingdom great on earth. So even though I'm here today on Sunday, it's already Monday in Australia, but yesterday from our bank account automatically went our tithes and offerings into our local church. You say, oh, that's not, you can't do that. It's not really giving automatic like that. No, I set it up and I'm aware every Sunday, which was yesterday here, that we were giving into our local church. Yeah, that's worshiping the Father. Another definition of, of worship in the New Testament is this. That. <laughs> to lay prostrate before the Lord. Amazing, isn't it? We don't do that very often. I, I'm not expecting us to, to have to do that today. But when you get the opportunity to do that, get down on your face before the Lord. Because we're, we're quite comfortable with a lot of the charismatic versions of uh, praise. Here we go. We've got this one here, the newbie version, the elbow flap. I, I saw some elbow flappers this morning. It's like, you're just so excited about the Lord. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. If that's all you can manage, worship the Lord with the elbow flap. That's all right. But you know, there's more. We've got carry the TV. <laughs> Open palms. Yep, got it right there going on there. And we can go further than that. We can like, wow, man, I'm getting bold now. It's out here. You know, it's like, whoa, watch this. Um, <laughs> I'm making fun of our charismatic Pentecostal ways because they are quite funny. Uh, and this is not to make you self-conscious, but to actually say they're all okay. God's happy with them all. This is, now we're getting more spiritual. My fish was this big. 
the more spiritual it was, like my face was this big. You guys fish up here? Yeah. Uh, we fish in Australia, that's for sure. Uh, and, and then we've got, hold my baby, please. <laughs> and and going to go a bit further here, like, man, I am sold out for the Lord. And we get even a bit more spiritual. The Holy Spirit comes on as we start the dueling light bulbs, man. <laughs> Come on, you've all seen the dueling light bulbs. Someone give me the dueling light bulbs right now. Come on. What's what balcony? What happened to my balcony people? Uh, everyone, look at the balcony. We want to see dueling light bulbs. Ready? Go. Yeah, it's okay. We can worship the Lord like that's. It's a professional level of right there. Um, uh, here we go. The heart. Oh, I saw some heart burners this morning. Worship the Lord. Oh, Father, we bless you. We just, and that's good. They're all good. This, they're all they're all work. But then we've got the point of the sword, the schoolroom. Come on going to get the attention here but now we're professional right here <laughs> the village people a little bit more strengthened rocky and last but not least touchdown. <laughs> it's funny isn't it like it's really funny that you know we i don't know where we get our spirituality from but just worship the lord you know, it's, they're, all, they're all okay. Don't be too self-conscious about it. Just make a connection. And these things help us make a connection. They, they're, they're all good. They, they help us actually get outside of ourselves. And this morning, I was encouraged you to lift your hands because I think, I think we can go beyond the elbow flap, you reckon? Yeah, yeah like we can. Um, so it means uh, to lay prostrate before the Lord. And the Bible speaks about it in many different places. Uh, but here's, here's just a couple for you. Uh, Daniel 10, 15, while he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and I was speechless. When you really encounter the presence, the glory of God, there's, there, you can't, there's nothing to say. Come on. Something about getting right down on your face before the Lord. Uh, Genesis 17, 3, then Abram fell on his face and God talked to him. Look at the progression here. He first fell on his face then God talked to him. Numbers 20 verse 6, So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly of the door of the tabernacle of meeting. They fell on their faces. Then look what it says, And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Wow. 1 Chronicles 21 16, Then David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. There might be a time where we need to fall on our faces, people, and seek God, worship him. Matthew, in New Testament, Matthew 17, 6, when the disciples heard of Jesus' transfigure, oh, we got it spelt correctly, Pastor. When they heard of Jesus' transfiguration, they fell on their faces. Now look at this. They didn't see Jesus transfigured. They just heard of the transfiguration of Jesus and they fell on their faces. New Testament worship. Revelation 7, 11, And all the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. I'm just reading the Bible to you. Face down worship. Bowing before the Father is one of the forms of worship in the New Testament. A very godly thing to do. And when God's moving that way, can I encourage you to just be a part of it? So worship also means the circumcision of our heart. Someone said to me one time, I don't, I don't like all these songs that are speaking about us the songs that are speaking about the church or referring to us, the, our, our true worship songs should only refer to the Lord and we should be just singing them to the Lord. And, and I can understand what that person was saying, but you know what? That's not really a scriptural concept. The Bible doesn't say a worship song is just a song from me to God, but it also includes the condition of our heart. And the word circumcision there comes from the word circumcidery, which means to cut around the surgical removal. And let me say this, when something is surgically removed, it doesn't grow back. 
if we would allow the grace and mercy of God to do a deep work in our hearts and remove things that, that, he, that don't please Him, see, this part of worship, just to say, God, here, I surrender my heart to you, Lord. Would you take away concepts and ideas and thoughts and attitudes and habits that don't please you? Lord, let them be surgically removed by the grace and mercy and love and kindness of God so that will never come back. Some of those songs we sing are going to include us. Because false worship is when we just come and we sing a beautiful song, but our hearts are not really for God. We're not really living that life at home. Let me jump down here to John chapter 4, 23 and 24. And I want the guys to come because in a moment we're going to sing and start to worship the Lord like we're going to really worship Him. Are you ready? Like I want you to lift your voice and, and the top of your voice we're just going to declare how amazing and how beautiful God is. It says here, the time is coming, it has in fact come, when what you're called will not matter and where you go to worship will not matter. But look at this, it's who you are and the way you live that count before God. It's who you are. It's who you are at home, it's who you are at work, it's who you are with your friends. That's when real worship is happening. It's the way you live that count before God. It's how you speak to your spouse. It's the kindness in your voice as you treat the others around you with respect and with honor. That's worship before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of God. Today we're here in church, we're celebrating together, but listen, we're here pursuing God. I want God. I want Him ruling and reigning in my life. And I want to, I want to give Him honor and glory and access to every part of my life. It goes on to say, that's the kind of people the Father is looking for. Those who are simply, honestly themselves. That's why I said, you know, if you're, if you're comfortable with the elbow flap, that's okay. If you've, got, if you've got the pointer going on, that's good as well. Just connect with the living God. Don't pretend to worship Him. Make a heart connection deep from your spirit today, deep from your heart. Come on, let it connect with the living God. You see, I can stand in the front of my house and hold a hose and pretend to water the garden. Now, why would I do that? Why would anyone pretend to water the, water the garden? That's a silly thing to do. But you know what? Sometimes we've been guilty coming to church and we know that we should lift our hands or do something and we're just actually pretending, but our hearts are not really there. Come on, make a connection. If I take that hose and I connect it to the tap and turn the tap on, now I'm really watering the garden. Just connect people, connect it up, like let it flow. If my wife is talking to me, I've discovered the mute button. I can turn the TV off even the red one like turn it off and look at her and face her and make connection with her all the ladies said amen God is sheer being itself spirit they that worship him must do it from their very beings their true selves in adoration to him let me finish with this last scripture here revelations 4 1 to 10 after these things I looked and beheld a door standing open in heaven I want to declare today there's an open heaven you don't have to worship God like you've got to bust down the gates of heaven, or push something open. There's an open heaven. It's already open. You have access. There's angels ascending and descending before the throne of God. The first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. And then it says, immediately I was in the Spirit and beheld a throne set in heaven and one set on that throne. Here's the question for you. How long does it take to get into the Spirit? Immediately. Uh, are you sure? Like we need to do at least two fast songs and two slow songs, Haka Shanda, Oroma and then we can maybe get into the Spirit. Or we need to pray for several. You can step into it. Come on, mature people know how to step into the Spirit. The Bible says walk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit. It says all those things. Well, how do you do that? By faith. You see, you can't walk unless you take a step. So you step in by faith. I step into the realm of the Spirit and I worship God from my spirit. Are you ready to do this in a moment here? We're just going to step out of the natural and step into the Spirit realm and worship God from that place. It's not spooky. It's not weird. It's very natural. I beheld a throne set in heaven. And he that sat there was like jasper and a sardi, a stone in appearance. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. 
And around the throne were, were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. They had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. I like to use my imagination. And when I worship the Lord, I imagine I'm just on this massive sea of glass. And even as a kid learning to play the piano and worship the Father, I'd pretend to roll the grand piano in on the sea of glass before the Father. Father, I'm going to play for you. Minister to the Lord. Come on, God uses our imagination. In the midst of the throne, around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in the front and the back. Stop. What's these creatures with eyes in the front, eyes in the back? I think about that. You know what it speaks of? It speaks of awareness. Be aware. When we're worshiping God together, be aware of those in front of you and those behind you because every one of us have a responsibility. Our engagement in worship is either helping someone behind us or hindering them. Ooh. See, it's not just me and God, but yes, it's us and the Lord together. We encourage each other on. I was at Hillsong Conference and watching a lady four rows in front. I know you say, Andrew, you should be more spiritual than that. You should be worshiping the Lord, not watching her. But she was like a newbie and she kind of stood out. Like she didn't know what to do. Everyone's clapping. And so she kind of like started clapping and, and then people start raising their hands and she's like, okay, I'll do this. And, and then sure enough, at the end of the service, the altar call was given. She was one of the first to raise her hand and say, I want to receive Christ as my Savior. But she'd been led in worship by those around her. Every one of you here, not just the worship team, not just Lish or the song leader, everyone here is a worship leader or a worship deterrent. Full of eyes in the front and the back. One more verse here. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third like a face of a man, and the fourth like a flying eagle. This speaks of the different forms of worship that we have on earth that also exist in heaven. The lion speaks of bold, militant, aggressive worship. There's times where you just got to get strong and loud and aggressive about it. The lion is bold. It's afraid of no other beast. The, the Bible says in Proverbs, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So listen, when that kind of anointing is flowing in the house, get with it, get strong, get aggressive, be, 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 be bold. The second living creature is like a calf. The calf and the Word of God speaks of new life. It speaks of celebration. It speaks of joy and liberty. Have you ever seen a calf, a newborn calf? Once they find their legs, you can't stop them, man. Like once they've got that feeling that they've got some legs beneath them. I mean, there's the, there's the cow. And the calf is just like prancing all around. You ever seen a newborn calf? They just can't stand still. And the cow's like. So the, quest, the question, are you, a, are you a cow worshiper? Big long face. Or you know how to celebrate. There's nothing worse than when there's a celebration going on. We've got all these people who said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't, that's not my personality. I don't like doing that. Get over your personality. Let the personality of Christ rise up with you. The righteous are as bold as a lion. There's a time to celebrate. Just get over that. Dance, move something. I'm going to ask these boys. They've written this amazing song called Amped. And talks about getting on fire for God. We're going to give you an opportunity to dance. Do not leave this place today without dancing before the Lord. Like, get the celebration on. The third living creature is like the face of a man, which speaks of intimate, tender worship. There's times where you've got to be okay with it being very quiet and very silent, very intimate before the Lord. The fourth living creature is like a flying eagle, which speaks of the prophetic. Our songs and our worship is not just about us or this moment, how we feel at this moment, but it's about eternity. Your children, your children's children's children are waiting for you to declare how great is God right now in 2015. Would you stand to your feet? Let's worship worship the Father together. If you can do, help me out this morning. Let's just, let's just start with, let's start here. Hold my baby. Let's just start at this point, right? Open the palms. See your face in every sunrise. The colors of the morning are in 
inside your eyes The world awakens in the light of the day I look up to the sky and say You're beautiful Whoa. You're beautiful I see your power I see your power In the moonlit night Where planets are in motion And galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are You're beautiful Come on, sing to the Father You're beautiful
saw no more will enter in as the wedding bells ring your bride will come together and sing for you, Father. that you place in Lord let it take root let Lord let it grow Lord let it flourish Lord let it affect every area of our lives Lord we need you Lord we worship you and Lord we are so glad that you gave your life and you adopted us and call us your children Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? You know, doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were born on, raised on, or been through. God has adopted you. And now you're on his side. And on his side, we can overcome anything not because of us, but because of who's with us. Amen. Man, it sure is good. Do me a favor. Go ahead and be seated if you would. How many of you are blessed? How many of you are blessed? Give me a little bit of light. How many of you are blessed today? I want to do something and I want to receive an offering to bless this team. We have a great worship team, but this is a great worship team as well. How many of you know what I'm saying? And how many of y'all know they didn't ride mules from Australia to get here? Otherwise, you wouldn't be seeing your, you couldn't get here on a mule. But what I want to do is the Bible says that when we receive spiritual, we should sow back into natural. And what it is, is that as we stop and we say, Lord, you, Lord, did this in my heart or did that in my heart. Lord, my desire is that you would do what you did in my heart in somebody else's heart. And I wanna help you to be able to do that. And so I'm gonna pray that the Lord's just gonna direct each and every one of us as to what he would have us to do. And if you're making out a check, make it out to Road to Life Church, cause we'll just write one check, 100% of everything that comes in is going to the team, but we'll write one check to them, but we want to send them out in Jesus style. How many of you know what I mean? God, we just thank you for your word that you sowed into us today. Lord, 
what we're desiring is, Lord, that that word that you put in us would just begin to take root. Lord, it would root out everything else. And Lord, we thank you for the vehicle and the vessel that you brought into our life. Lord, the expression of worship that you revealed to us today. And Lord, we're asking you, what would you have us to do? Lord, we wanna partner with Andrew and his entire team. And Lord, we thank you for that. Speak to our heart and we say yes and amen to what you speak. Amen. Just do what the Lord directed you to do. Whatever he directed you to do, just do it in just a minute or two. The ushers are going to come forward. I want to encourage you. Do you have a CD back there, Andrew? Give it away. He said, He said, give these away. Does anybody want this? Okay, let me hear you. Does anybody want this? Okay, we, what we have is, I understand that this worship CD has not even been released yet. Is that correct? It's not anywhere yet. And so when does it come out? November 4th. November 4th, this comes out. I'm going to give this away, but I know you guys have a bunch of them back there. So somebody's going to get it for free. And for the rest of you, I want to encourage you, go get one. Is um, Who wants this? Let me just say, who who wants this? Who 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 like really, 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 really needs it? There you go, dude. That's for you. Okay, now, this is a Worship Encounter 3. And tell me a little about this. That's the extended version. The CD has 79 minutes. That has one hour, 30 minutes on it. Oh, my goodness. So, so this is an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, who wants this over here? Anybody? Let me see. In this, in this section, nobody in the balcony has their hand lifted, so they don't want anything up there. Um, so l- let me just say, who 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 would like this in in uh, in in this section? Okay, look, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go like this. Ready? Oh, there it is. Okay, and then this one is. Uh, turn it around. Oh, that's all the CDs for fifty dollars. That's eight albums for fifty dollars. You want me to give this away? You can give it away. This is eight 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 albums for eight eight albums for 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 fifty bucks. Okay, I'm I'm looking up in the balcony. Okay, Orlando, is that you with your hand up up there? Okay, give give this to Big O up there. Go give that to Orlando up there. And the the amped album. These guys they want to give one a free copy to everybody under twenty one. Under everybody under 21. You know, Andrew, I'm 20. <laughs> in your dreams, man. Come on, in my dreams. You're right. The free one now. Who wants a? F- okay. So if you're under, if you're under 21, they want to just stop by. Come, come see us. Come see them. Okay. If you want, if you want to. Now let me just ask you. Did oh ushers, come on up. Did I forget to tell you guys to come up? I'm sorry. Come on up. I got all I, I got all sidetracked in that in that whole th- in that whole thing, but but I want to um, I want to encourage you in something that um, that Andrew said and I've never heard it um, is that worship is a life it's not a lifestyle, and I think that that is so true because how many of you know that our lifestyles adjust based on what's going on in our life yeah. is. It, different seasons emphasize different priorities and well I was going to the gym but now I don't have time to go to the gym because my lifestyle just changed and now I need to do but worship is life and what it is is I want to encourage you that if if nothing else sticks to begin to prioritize a time of worship in your life where you just strip everything off just come before the Lord and just invite him to come in deeper and stronger than he ever has in your life and what is amazing is when Whenever we invite him, he always does it. Amen. Well, how many of you want to cut loose one more time? Stand up if you would. Are you guys ready back here? Come on, guys. If you're young or young at heart, I want you to come down the front. I want you to come down. We're just going to create a praise pit right here where we're going to worship Jesus. We're going to give everything we have. Come on, if you're young, come down. If you're young at heart, come down. We're going to go crazy for Jesus this morning. Come on. Sing this decision. This decision I made is 
to live for you When the darkness overrides Your light breaks through Take your rightful place On the throne of my heart Amp up this generation Before they depart Come on! We know that you are the maker You ignite our flame We know that you are creator We are not ashamed We know that you are the maker You ignite our flame We know that you are creator We are not ashamed Come on, say freedom, freedom. Chains are broken, cause you have spoken. Freedom, freedom to move, freedom to dance. Dance in your freedom, in your freedom we dance. So as we sing, let's declare it, let's build up, amen. So as we build, I just want everyone to start rising, start rising as a generation, start rising up in freedom. And then when we get really big, when we start declaring it, I want everyone to bust out and go crazy for Jesus, all right? You guys ready? Let's sing, dance in your freedom. Let the dancing begin. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Right, up a little bit more. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Up a little bit more. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom. Ready, guys? Let's dance. In your freedom we dance. Dance in your freedom. In your freedom we dance. Chains are broken, cause you have spoken Let's make that declaration. Say freedom! 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 In Jesus' name. Let the dancing begin. Thank you, Lord. What was that? (laughs) 
I want to encourage you that um, I know that we gave away a few things, but you guys have like a, um, a lot of different ways to feed your soul, to feed your spirit that are back there. And, and I want to encourage you to just stop and just to look and just say, Lord, what's going to minister to my soul the most? And look at all of the various, because there, they have, there's, an, an, a, there's a gift and there's an anointing upon Andrew and upon his team. And what that gift does is it equips us, it matures us, and it develops us. And so just stop and stop by the table, look at everything that they have. And I guarantee you something there is going to minister, maybe everything. Well, probably everything, unless it requires, like me, everything can minister to me unless I've got to sing. How many of you know what I'm seeing before? I mean, publicly. Anyway, I sing all the time. Hey, y'all don't know it, but I sound incredible in the shower. But what I want you to do is stop by, and I think that you'll be blessed. Were you blessed by him tonight, this morning? Give him a hand. Thank you, Lord. If you're, if you're here this morning, and in regard to your relationship to, with Christ, you have never come to a spot, realize that this is not about religion. It's not about a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's about a living, loving, powerful relationship with a God who wants us to know him as our father in a very personal way, that he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. And you know, you might, maybe people have forgotten about you and they've thrown you by the wayside. I wanna tell you something, God will never do that. He will never do that. But you've never given your heart to Christ and you've never come to a spot or maybe today you did. We want to help you in that decision. So if that was you and you did that, as we close just this portion of the service, I want to encourage you, come on up. There'll be a few of us up here. Or if you're here and you need prayer in any area of your life, we want to pray with you because what we know is we have been where you're at in a place of needing prayer. And we wanted people that loved us, cared about us, and would pray and stand with us. And we want to pray, and we have seen God come through for us, and he's coming through for you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. We will see you. Go to one of the life groups this week, Wednesday night. There's, I think, a half a dozen of them going on here at the church. But I want to encourage you, get plugged in. If I don't see you before next Saturday night, Sunday morning services, I'd love to see you then. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you.